Okay, get this. Travelling from one end of Singapore to another by car takes about 40 minutes. But if you take public transport from Paya Lebar to like Woodlands, it takes you about 1.5 hours to 2. How can? There are countless videos and articles that debate the cost of car ownership versus cabbing slash grabbing everywhere. But they're all quite hypothetical. Lah. I think living in today's economy really requires you to evaluate all your options properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cab everywhere for two weeks to see if it's truly the most economically viable solution for those of us who are living in these trying times. Today is the first day of me grabbing everywhere for two weeks. I got to sleep in a bit this morning because it usually takes an hour for me to get to work, but with a cab, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, could you turn it on the right? Yeah. Thank you. I just got off a cab and in a really good mood because I managed to get from my home to my office without breaking a single sweat. Excellent. It is incredibly hot out today. So I just ended a really long day at work and I'm super tired. Because after this I still need to work and make dinner for myself. I spent the rest of the day shuttling between work appointments and took a cab a total of four times. That added up to about $80 in total. Say I average about $50 worth of cab rides every day to and from home, plus maybe one place in between, that's about 1.4k a month. Say we slap on an additional $50 worth of surcharges for weekend cab rides, that brings us to about a total of 1.6k a month, which is about roughly half the salary of a fresh grad here. Pretty crazy. I'm going to meet someone who actually caps everywhere to see if this is an accurate amount. This is Mabel. She's a teacher. Mabel takes a cab to work every day because she considers it the most time and cost efficient option for her. So I stay in the south mm. and my workplace is all the way in the east. The nature of my work requires me to wake up really early. I have to be at work by 7 latest. Right. Standard price for me to get from home to work is about $17. Okay. But I do share with a colleague and then uh, that really cut down my expenses by half la, mm. for every morning. Mm. I cannot be late for work. There's no way or no room for me to wiggle around that. La. Mm. So I'd rather put my mind at ease and just you know pay $8 every morning to get to work on time. Mm. $8 uh, 5 times a week, that's... $40. Let's say over the weekend you spend like maybe... Maybe 20 to 30 if let's say I take one for Saturday and one for Sunday. Right, right. Yeah. So like in a month you'll be slightly under like 40 to 50? Yeah. yeah. Mm. A few of my friends have told me that like uh, even if you take Grab every day, right, you still spend way less than owning a car because of the instalment that you have to pay. It is true actually. Um, yeah. Because of the petrol prices yeah, and yeah. you have to maintain the car. So I think Mabel makes really good points. The cost of owning a car in Singapore really has all these like hidden fees that add up over time. As of 2023, the cost of a car and COE is estimated to be around 170 k If you include this list of additional fees, it brings you to an additional cost of 14.5 k a year or 1.2 k a month. Another day, another cab. It's my fifth day of cabbing everywhere and I've noticed that it saved me quite a bit of time but I also feel like it's made me take things for granted so I end up booking things quite last minute. I'm attending a media event and I'm trying to get a cab during the hour and it's insane, I've been waiting for like 15 minutes. Maybe I should have booked it earlier. One thing I've been thinking about is the time cost benefit analysis of owning your own car or cabbing everywhere instead of taking public transportation and what a class privilege that is. I'm going to speak to a friend who drew up that analysis themselves and decided that even though private vehicle ownership is typically viewed as a privilege, it was a necessary item essential for their survival. This is Javier. He's the assistant manager at a really popular izakaya. He rents a bike because of his work as it saves the most time and money for him. He spends about $450 a month and his company covers about half of the cost for him. I work here about roughly six days a week. Right, mm. that's a lot. That's, that's nice. a lot. And my Saturday night is about roughly 4pm to uh, past shopping night. Right, 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 right. right. Price for taxi is very expensive and so is Grab now. 
which is why I need a bike. I start to take a motor license first mm. when doing army because I have all the time I want. Mm. Then after that, uh, why do you take motor license instead of like car license? Because motor are cheaper than car. Yeah, it's true lah. After that, I got opportunity come and I decided to uh, rent a bike. Mm. Inclusive of petrol, how much would that bring you to? Uh, roughly about two eighty to three hundred. Okay. Depends on how often I ride. Do you feel like this is a sustainable option for you? I mean, if my company, my work does support the idea of uh, renting the bike, then it's definitely way affordable than any any other transport. Hmm. And if they don't, eh? let's say you have to pay like four fifty upfront a month. I will choose to buy a bike. Mm. It's definitely way cheaper. If you are living in Singapore, owning a bike versus owning a car versus taking public transport such as Grab, I think bike is definitely way affordable than the rest. If you are a person who travel out late at night. If you didn't have this option, do you feel like life here would be very very difficult to live? I would say lesser freedom and you have to wake up earlier, you have to spend more on the transport time. Mm -hmm. I guess the other thing about like riding a bike is that I think some people are a bit more opposed to it because it's dangerous, right? Yes, I don't deny the danger of it. I myself got into an accident a few times. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't deter you from no. riding a bike? Because, Why? I mean, I enjoy riding definitely. No matter whether is it the sunny day or rainy day itself. Would you see yourself like in 10 years, maybe still riding a bike or do you think you will change over to like car ownership for instance? Mm -hmm. Definitely, later on in life, I'll change to a car where I have more money, where I have more to afford one. I suppose $300 a month to have the freedom to travel anytime, anywhere is a really tempting option. Good morning. It is 7 a.m. on a Saturday and I am out and about. This was one of the hottest days in Singapore and had three places to be. I don't know how I would have done it if I didn't get to cap everywhere. It was then I realised how privileged I am to get to cap everywhere and get multiple things done over the weekend. For individuals and families who don't have the ability to own a car, I can only imagine how stressful and tiring it must be and how they have to cut back on activities because of extended travelling time. So, I just finished the beach cleanup. I'm gonna head home. It must be tough for them and makes me think about how lucky I am to do this experiment. So I've finally reached the double digit days of my experiment and honestly I can't help but feel a little bit indulgent um, especially from an environmental standpoint. Okay, imagine if every Singaporean owned a car and used it on a daily. We won't just be contributing to massive ongoing jams on a daily but the amount of carbon emissions that we'll be producing as a result would amount to about 32 million tonnes. I don't know if I can live like this knowing that I'm personally responsible for making Singapore hotter every year. And I'm not gonna lie, I do kind of miss looking out of the window of a double-decker bus. Pretty sure that there are some Singaporeans who have the same thoughts as me and therefore, I think car sharing has become a more popular option over the last couple of years. Hi, Jerry! This is Jerry. He's been using car sharing services since COVID and I'm curious to know why he likes this as an option for transport. I have my folks, so sometimes I take them out to dinner together in a car. Uh, otherwise, you know, my friends are in town and if I'm running late, that's a very convenient way to connect me to town. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at the inside. Let's get in there. <coughs> I mean, you use multiple apps across the board, right? So what's yeah. the average amount that you are spending? Actually, a good question. I've actually not really checked my spending for this. But I would say averaging about 100 plus dollars a week. So That's okay. in a month, it's about 400 dollars. So yeah, 3 to 400 a month, depending on you know how much I drive. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's really... It's quite okay. I mean, compared to car ownership yeah. per se, yeah. Yeah, I do rent quite often, so that's yeah. okay. Let's have a look at the car in closer detail. <laughs> you can see it's a bit like dirty. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, it's a little bit streaky in the cup holder area. I'm wondering like when you encounter such 
mess? What do you do? Like, is it common? Like, for um, fun? I, I just tend to not really care that yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, but if it's something a little bit more uh, offensive, of course, I will take a picture and I'll send it in like, hey, this is not acceptable. La. Right, what's, what's like the worst you've ever encountered? I think uh, there were not just uh, chips, drinks, there was also used condom wrappers inside. And I was just like, mm, luckily it's just me, myself and I to bear the disgust. Yeah. I can't imagine if I was on a date or if I'm with friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that would be a really bad impression. Not a lot of spaces in Singapore. You know? Not really, yeah, you know, it was one seat that, you know, all you need is a small space. It was yeah. one seat. It was one seat. Yeah. So I was watching a video the other day about how car sharing, especially those that use electric vehicles, are the way forward for a more environmentally friendly future. And I think after speaking to Jerry, I see the feel. I think that it's definitely the way to go. But just looking at the kings, you know, like around sort of like the car sharing industry today, I do think that they still have quite a long way to go. I do have hope. I think that it's something that we can look forward to. But for now, I don't know. I don't know. Currently about 6 p.m. I just woke up from my nap. The sun was so hot today. It was like insane. In the last few days of this experiment, I noticed that I've grown very reliant on taking cabs. Ah! Uncle, don't leave! It's my last day of the experiment and I decided to share okay, my little luxury with a friend and reflect on the journey. Oh! Hello! Right! Yeah. Hey guys! So I'm with my friend Wendy. Um, she's really kindly, you know. I no, kindly yeah, allowed you. <laughs> it's a hot day. So I'm so thankful that you got it's me. It's a hot day. Yeah, I'm so very privileged right now. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I don't really grab that often. I maybe to work sometimes if it's in the morning. Mm. It's a bit early. But uh, yeah. I do feel like Grab is quite an expense like for to have for a whole month. The millennial Gen Z generation can be quite like spendthrift. Mm. Like we just spend on things That's and true. we don't really take into consideration all of the luxuries that we do is like spending on cats, right? But yeah. I think we all are quite actually like reasonable, responsible adults. Yeah. I will cap within reason. You know, yeah. sometimes it's like you're like, I don't know, gonna spend 40 bucks like back or like 30 bucks back. Yeah. And Personally, if I do feel like I've kept a lot that month or like that week maybe, then I will, you know, readjust my schedule to make sure that I am like not kept home or like I'm taking pump just for home mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I've spent $530 on caps in the last two weeks, which is slightly less than my estimated 1.6k. Regardless, I do still think that car ownership in Singapore is a luxury and a privilege and a really heavy burden to the environment. It's definitely a want, not a need with the exception of maybe some people. Besides, public transport in Singapore is actually really efficient. So, I'd really like to see a future where we can all adopt car sharing and perhaps supplement our travelling options with either taking the bus or train.